It's been a long time coming from the SC Sakalana, baby. Sometimes it feels like the world is against me. Cause I'm coming from SC. From heartache and pain, struggle and strain. Trying to maintain for the SC. So, mama, don't worry. Hey, I'ma make my dreams happen. Question of the day. Tweezers are multitask implements that can be used to A. Trim the cuticle of the nail B. Lift small bits of debris from the nail plate C. Trim the free edge of the nail and D. Place cotton between the toes Answer will be revealed at the end of the video. It's time for a shout out praise break and I want to give these four amazing subscribers a shout out. I am Biscuit. L Neil 2800. Kiara Creations. And Barry Q Nails with a Z. Thank you all for being the first four to comment on my latest post and having your post notification bells turned on. Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to the Nail Genie SC. How are you? I hope you are doing well and your family is well. If you don't mind, if this is your first time visiting the channel, consider subscribing and if you've been here with me, and no returning, I want to thank you for coming back. Go ahead and hit that like button for me. It helps out the channel a great deal. And help pushes our content out to many more amazing subscribers such as yourself. So guys, in today's video, this video is in real time. It's going to be a real time application. We are going to be using some Madam Glam products. We're going to be using the Madam Glam Shimmer Nude Builder Gel as well as the Madam Glam's uh, Clear Builder Gel. So we're going to be using those two items along with uh, Madam Gel's base coat and the uh, application brush also by Madam Glam. So guys, I wanted to leave this application in real time for you guys because if there is someone out there that may want to start their builder gel journey and just been afraid to try it out um and feeling like i, I just can't do it i'm going to show you about two different ways and and even talk to you about a third different way um during the video that you can apply your builder gel and not focus so much on the status quo of what everybody else do right um so um, I practice every medium and I love, love, love my practice hands because I'm able to get the practice in. Now, I would rather have a real live hand to do this on, but of course, um, I have product already on my hand and I'm not uh, ready to let it go yet. So I'm going to use my practice hands. So I'm going to just walk you guys step by step as if this was a real person you're doing the nails on. And before we get started, I just want to show you guys I use the 6060 grit, grit uh, nail file to shape these nails into the stiletto shape that they are. Um, they were a um, no C curve 2XL coffin tip by 876 nails and I just trim the nails so I could get the stiletto shape. All right. So what I'm doing is going in with the dehydrator and primer. Now I would usually never do a dehydrator and primer on my practice hands, but of course I want to go step by step with how I would do 
my nails or my client's nails. So I would go in and dehydrate the nail to remove any uh, oils or chemicals that may have enveloped over on top of the nails while we were doing um, prep or whatever we was doing. And, you know, this is another form of step of prep. You can use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol to do that if you need to. Um, You don't necessarily need a dehydrator. Now I'm going in with a primer, and I'm just going to use the primer on the natural nail surface, not on the tips. So when you're doing um, using um, the dehydrator or primer, you don't have to use it on the whole nail. You can just use it on the natural nail, and that's it, because that's the part um, that you want to make sure the gel hold on to. And I'm so sorry, guys. I was trying to clip out those blurry um portions of the video for you guys I did not want to um, keep that in because it's going to mess up the when I go to download it for you guys it just reject the uh, footage so I tried to um, cut that out and it created all of those uh, glitches as you saw or shots moving really really fast all right, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going with the uh, Madam Glam's base coat. And I'm going to put the base, apply the base coat on the natural nail surface where the um, natural nail is exposed all the way down past, a little bit past the free edge. Now, if you want, you can use that base coat to go all the way down the nail. But I'm not going to do that with this application simply because... I'm going to use a slip layer as well on this um, on the nail when I start the process. So I'm already using various amount of gel. So I'm like, okay, I scratched the surface of the nails or not scratched the surface, but buffed out the surface of the tip and the nail itself so that the um, gel will have something to hold on to as well. So I'm not going to just take the base gel all the way down the nail but if you want to please feel free to do so especially if you're doing this on your own natural nail or a client's nail now had i been doing this on an actual client and not really just um using excess product on my practice hand i would have went down the full length of the nail so it's really up to your discretion how you want to do it but to be safe you rather Cover the entire nail with the base coat. That way the gel hold on to something, right? It clings to gel. Gel clings to gel. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to clean around the area of the sidewalls and cuticle to make sure no um, uh, product is on the skin. Anytime you get product on the skin of your client or yourself, make sure you remove that right away. You don't want to um, develop any type of allergy over a length of time um, just because product is always, you know, sitting on your skin. Okay, so now we're going to go in with the application. Now, remember, guys, I cut out the um, curing part of the video every time because it's just I feel like it's just going to prolong the video. But after you apply the base coat, you want to cure it in the lamp for a 30, 30 second or 60 second cure. Depends on your lamp. Okay. So make sure you have a good, uh, um, a very high wattage lamp, at least 48 watts, 30, what, 36 to 48 watts. Um, or a 48 watt or above for curing gel, okay? Um, you want to make sure your gel is cured completely. And you can cure the gel 60 seconds to 2 minutes. It's best that you read the description on the back of the builder gel to make sure you're curing the gel completely. Now, you guys know I have a Madam Glam lamp um, I just purchased, but I'm not going to be using my Madam Glam lamp today. So, I'm going to cure this for 120 seconds, which is... Um, yeah, two full rounds of 60 seconds. So I'm going to cure my, um, hand, uh, cure, cure each finger for 120 seconds using this, uh, lamp here to make sure all of the builder gel is cured completely. Okay. So now we're going to go in with the application. 
And I was just cleaning out my brush and showing you guys that when I, I was using alcohol to first kind of soften the brush. And then I went in and put the acetone a little bit on it so I could get the color out. Because um, I use color sometimes with this brush. And I know that sometimes the color get trapped into the brush no matter how much I clean it. So I'm going in now with the slip layer. Now the slip layer is that layer you want to do. It's like your guide. It's your guide for your gel, okay? So whenever you place the slip da layer down on the nail, you wanna make sure that it's in the space or the places on the nail where you want the second layer to go, if that makes sense. So now I'm going in with the builder gel to start building the enhancement of the nail so i'm going i'm doing this floating motion and i started at the free edge where the free edge and the tip meets um and the reason why i did that is because in that area that's going to be my stress area and that's where my apex is going to be formed for this nail for this length for this shape so I'm going in and I'm keeping the connection of the builder gel now this builder gel here is a very nice self-leveling easy to use gel um, when I was using it I was like yes I am loving the flow of this gel now there are uh, builders out there that have a stiffer consistency um, but this one kind of just flows easily down the nail. So I would say if you a first timer starting out with any type of builder gel products, start out with something like this product, Madam Glam product, because it has a um, easy flow formula. It self levels, so it kind of pulls itself together, um, and it's very nicely pigmented. So. It pick is nicely pigmented, it's self level, and um, it flows very easily down the nail. I mean, those are the th three things you definitely want in your builder gel. Okay, so um, here I'm just going in, and where I lose connection at, guys, as you saw, I just go back and can go right back to where I left off and apply the product and start the connection back now here i'm just showing you guys that i can see a little divot in the nail but i'm gonna just go ahead and cure what i already have and then i'm gonna come back and do my third bead which we call things beads the more you pick up right but i'm gonna go ahead and cure what i have and then i'm gonna come back and fill in that cuticle area now this is one way you can build the nail it's Especially when you're dealing with long wearing nails. Like if your length is long, extra long, 2XL, 3XL. You want to uh, start the product at a, a good spot on the nail and build up. I can't, I don't know how to, okay, you want to start at closer to the tip of the nail and build up to the cuticle. I think that makes sense. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, if it's a three at cell, you want to start down near the free edge of the nail, then apply a bead above that and then apply your next bead above that. So it just depends on the length of the nail, but you want to make sure that, um, you know that you don't have to just get a big glob of gel and put it on the nail and hope it work out for you. You can use as many beads you want to for your application. So here I went in with the cuticle bead and I was just pushing that bead. I just dropped the bead slightly under the cuticle area so I don't flood the cuticle area with the gel. And I was using the brush to kind of push that gel up into that cuticle area with the rotating um, pillow motion is what we call it, a pillow motion. So I was kind of, kind of giving it more of like a pillow motion to push that product into the cuticle, but not to flood the cuticle area. 
and when I flip the nail, I like to flip the hand over. Um, when I'm when I'm applying this on myself, I like to flip my hand over and let it just sit and self level. And that what is that does? It's gonna help pull that product to the center of the nail and help give that apex a little bit more structure so it's going to pull all that product into the center of the nail and give you a beautiful nice apex don't be in such a hurry guys when it comes to your builder gel just let your hand sit there for about five good seconds before you check it turn it over check it if it's still not level the way you want to flip it again for another five seconds and stick it in the light okay i mean I only use my color gels for coverage, just like you do with acrylic powder. You don't want to, you can if you want to. Now, if you a person who, I, I'll just buy another jar, do what, you, do what you feel. But for me, I like to use my color gels just to cover the nail and get the color on the nail. And then I use the Builder Clear clear builder gel to build up the nail and give it a little more structure if that makes sense okay so here i'm going into the ring finger and i'm just going to do the same thing but i'm going to show you guys another way that i will or sometimes do start the nail um and still be able to get a nice structure on the nail okay so i'm going to go in with the slip layer here and then I'm going to grab that second bead after I make sure that everything is nice. The, you know, all the product is tucked in. Nothing is hanging over the side walls. The shape is still shaping and I don't have any uh, product, you know, flowing in places. I don't want my second layer of product to go. Okay. So now I'm going to grab a bead. And I'm just going to start at the cuticle area. Now, on the, the pinky nail, I started at the free edge area, right? But here, I'm going to start at the cuticle area. And I'm sorry, guys, if it's a little grainy here. It's because that my camera is trying to focus in on where I'm placing that bead. But I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm doing the pillow motion, and I'm going back and forth back and forth, up and down, back and forth, round and round, up and down, back and forth. There's no wrong way to apply your gel. You have to figure out what is the best way for you to apply your gel. And then once you establish the way you want to apply your builder gel or hard gel, then that's you just stay with that rhythm and then it becomes a... Uh, the motion that you're in every single time that you go to apply. But it's no right or wrong way. But what you definitely want to do is keep the connection. And once you lose the connection, as you guys can see, when I lose the connection, I'll just pull the gel down and then I'll go back to where I stopped and I'll pick that back up and then go on down the nail until I get to a good point. Because, of course, you don't want a thick tip. You want your tip to be credit card thin, but you want to build structure on the rest of the nail. You definitely want to have a structure apex area um, because that's where your stress area is at. But you want to have um, a little structure on that length because you don't want it to break. It easily break off on you if, you know, you grab something wrong or you go to, you know, grab a door handle or lift up, you know, grab the door handle on your car by accident and don't grab it the right way and pop the nail or break the nail in half because it don't have structure so you want to be real careful um and want to build up your length um when you have a longer length you want to add a little bit more product but keep looking from side to side down the barrel of the nail give it the structure you want i know a lot of uh, ladies now even some of my own clients they want a very um natural look they don't want a thick nail they want it more natural and but they still want that structure because they still know that i'm a stickler for giving you that apex and giving you structure but i'm gonna do my best to give you the design the nail the style the shape everything you want 
but make sure I give you the structure so you don't have any breakage, no issues, no problems, because my only job, my main job is to make sure I maintain the healthy and safetyness of your natural nail. So guys, I'm going to do one more nail for you on camera, and then the other two I'm going to do off camera. I'm going to also encap a couple of nails for you so I can show you guys what I was talking about when I said encap and kind of build up the nail from there. And I'm also going to file a couple of nails to show you what type of grit file that you should use on a builder gel product. Okay, um, so I'm this is just strictly an application video. We will be doing um, a design or you know, doing something else on this hand, um, a nail art portion of the video in a separate, totally separate video. But I wanted to make sure that I left this video as application only just for someone who may want to start their journey and been a little afraid to start. Um, you can do, uh, build your nails. You don't have to do the floating method. You don't have to do the pillow method. What you can do guys is just a plain old simple polish method. Now it does take a little bit longer to build the nail up to the actual, um, length that you want but if you're doing your natural nail and you have like a medium length or even a beautiful long to medium to long length you can do use builder gel just simply polishing it on the nail each layer at a time until you actually build it up to the desired thickness um, that you want so don't be afraid to start your builder journey, builder gel journey, guys, because there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just keep the product off your skin. That I would tell you if that if anything is most important, keep the product off your skin. Okay? But other than that, don't fret so much about I don't know how to do the floating method. I don't know how to do the pillow method. I can't do that. You see, I try all different methods just to get what I need. And I always achieve the look that I want. You know, on my hand, on my client's hands, on my practice hands. I always end up with the results that I want in the end. So it's just take your time, have patience, and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Even if you're practicing on one nail on your hand and, and taking it off and practicing it again the following day until you got it the way you want to. Just practice. Practice will help you get better with your craft. As much as you try, as much as you do it, you'll get better over time. Practice do not make perfect. That's a saying that we learned a long time ago when we was very, very young and people was telling us that. Practice does not make perfect. There is no perfect person in this world at all. But practice do make perfection. So, I mean, improvement. I'm sorry, perfection. I just said practice don't make perfect. Lord have mercy. Practice do make improvement, not perfection. <laughs> so... Just keep practicing and you're improving your craft every single time. No worries about, you know, I can't do it the way this person do it. Or I can't do it the way that person do it. It's okay. Do it the way you do it. And and get that to your liking. Okay? So as you can see, guys, I started the application once the, I broke from the uh, application I went ahead and took the product and just kind of melted it down the nail and I'm going to grab another bead and start where I left off and continue on with that and then I'm going to flip the hand over I'm going to let itself level and then I'm going to put it in the light for that 120 seconds but if you was using the cure like if I was using the Madame Glam curing lamp I will only use it the directions that it gives me on the back of the bottle which I think is 30 seconds or 60 seconds cure um curing time for that lamp so I will only cure it for that amount of time. But I'm one of those people who I just want to make sure 
everything is properly cured. You know, my clients are not leaving out of here with uncured product on their hands. And yeah, we is I'd rather be safe than sorry. So <laughs> that's my motto. I'd rather play it safe than be sorry at the end or sorry later, right? Um, because I definitely don't want um, any of my clients curing an allergy, a gel allergy, or a product allergy simply because of my own negligence. Um, so, yeah, that is something I would feel really, really bad about. And so I'll just make sure I am keeping the um, product off the skin and, you know, wiping my brush um before I even go around the cuticle area or the sidewalls, I make sure I wipe my brush or I get a cleanup brush and I use that to clean up the cuticle area so that that residue from the brush still does not make contact with the skin. So, yeah. So, as you guys see, I have two brushes out on the table, my cleanup brush as well as my application brush. And that's, that's just, that's just what I do when I'm working in jail. I make sure I have my cleanup brush with me and ready to go because yeah, you can't help it. Sometimes it's just how the client hold their hand or position their hand. If they don't hold their hand at a, a good, um, accurate level, um, the, gel can slip into the side walls or in the cuticle areas so you just have to be prepared you have to be ready um on go <laughs> and that's me i just be ready so here i've already applied all of the product um all of the nude color onto all five nails and now i'm going to go in with this clear builder and i'm going to go ahead and start encapping all of the nails and also this is not only to protect the nude color that's on the nail or the color that's on the nail but this is also going to build added structure to the nail okay so only simply because um i didn't want to use as much product on my practice hand i'm just going to show you guys how i will uncap the practice hand now if these were my nails and I was wearing them. I would have added maybe another layer of clear just to build that apex area up just a little bit more and give it a little bit more height. That way I feel more secure and more comfortable when um, I'm wearing the nails. But that's just me. Now you do what you feel and how you feel. Um, but I think on my practice hand, these nails came out absolutely gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. They were great. They were beautiful. They were gorgeous. And so um, I was happy with them. Very, very happy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end cap two of these nails. I'm going to let you guys watch. And then I will be back. Now, one thing I want to talk about is these UV protective gloves. Now, because it's my practice hand, of course, I'm not concerned about 
my practice hand. She's not going to get tanned in the UV light. But if you are using gel products, whether it's poly gel, hard gel, or builder gel, or going to be having your hands in and out the light, UV protective glove is the best way to go. Now, I'm not one that always remember that I have these gloves, and I actually have quite a few sets so I can have for my clients. But not all the time I remember to give my clients the gloves or even myself to throw the gloves on. But I still have to tell you, for the safety of your own nails, your own health of your hand and your skin, use the UV protective gloves. Also, if you have uh, suntan lotion, you know, apply that on your hands before going into the light. That's something I need to invest in, but I haven't even, I haven't uh, went anywhere this summer, so I hadn't even thought about picking up any suntan lotion because I'm hardly ever outside. But um, yeah, I sh I need to pick some up for my nail area. But yeah, make sure your safety is always first, guys. Uh, make sure you uh, have the necessary precautions you need in order to uh, maintain the health and safety of your skin, your nails, and, you know, your nail life. guys so these are 15 gram pots of gel it very nicely has a, a great um it has a good amount in there and i just wanted to reiterate you guys know that uh madam glam gels are hema free cruelty free 21 free formula palm oil free um and um what else it's one more i can't remember but you guys, um, for those who uh, do PR for Madam Glam, you already know the, the tagline. So, um, yes, uh, these are great formulated gels. Um, if you suffer from gel allergies, uh, Madam Glam is the way to go. Um, trying out any of their gel products from their uh, regular gels in a bottle, color gels to all of the different uh, gels they're coming out with now. Um, and their paint gels, um, chrome paints, and all of that good stuff, guys. If you suffer from allergies, Madam Glam is the best line for a person who suffers with uh, gel allergies. So give them a shot. I do have a, um, a link in my description box along with an affiliate code with Madam Glam. You can try out and see if it works for you. Um, but you can go through my link and um, use that link to, um, you know, start your Madam Glam journey. Um, I, I am a VIP member and I've been a VIP member for some years now. And um, I just love my Madam Glam membership. 
I'm able to build my collection just being a VIP member. So, yes, guys, I would tell you, if there is one product that I am going to stick with, it's going to be my Madam Glam, for sure. All right, guys, so I have already did the end cap off camera of all of the nails, and now I'm going in with the um, gel cleanser, and I am going to clean off the nails now if you were doing this on a um human hand you want to use a lint-free towel for each finger so you want to have five cloths lint-free cloths out to use for each finger and if you're doing it on both hands you want to have 10 cloths out one for each finger because you don't want to spread that um so when you're removing that tacky layer, that's a tacky layer of gel. You don't want to um, double back and uh, cross-contaminate to the other nail because if you touch the skin, you're just going to transfer the product onto the skin. So you want to make sure you have a lint-free towelette for each nail, okay, if you was doing this on your hands or a um, human person's hand but since this is my practice hand um i'm i think i only use four cloths so i just wanted to let you guys know if you're doing it on yourself or on someone else safety first make sure you're using the right amount of lint-free towelettes that way you're not cross-contaminating or transferring product onto the skin okay all right, guys, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to file these nails. Now, the best file to use for builder gel nails is a file that's not too coarse and not too fine. You want to be in the middle. So 100, 180 grit file is your best bet. So you want to use the 100 grit side to just clean up the shape area. You don't want to put that 100 grit on the surface of the nail because that can eat away at the builder gel. Now, as you guys can see, it's not much product on the nail, right? So if you was doing this on your own nail, you not you don't have much product on the nail. So you don't really need to uh, use a 100 grit or anything higher you know, um, um, yes, anything higher, um, not higher, anything lower than the 180 grit on the surface of the nails. 100 grit for the sidewalls to crisping up the shape and 180 grit on the surface of the nail. If you use 100 grit or 150 grit on your um surface of your nails or 60 grit or 80 grit you're going to eat into that builder gel and then there's not going to be anything anything <laughs> left on your nail you're really going to just be taking the product right back off so 180 grit file is about what you need for the surface of your nails now i know a lot of people rather just grab their e-file and that's fine. If you grab your e-file, use your 180 grit sanding band to do your filing on the surface of the nail. Nothing more, nothing, you know, nothing higher, no, no, uh, uh, coarse or extra coarse bit. Um, just something at a medium, like a medium grit sanding band or a, uh, medium bit. Um, like if it's your medium fine or medium or extra fine five in one or your medium barrel whatever the case may be but nothing so coarse that's going to start chipping and eating away at your product now i'm just going to show you guys how i go in and i just clean up the shape and i don't i try to learn to keep the product within the boundary of the guideline or the shape of the nail so i don't have a whole lot of fouling to do because i'm already starting to uh, feel that carpet tunnel kicking in on my right wrist and that's because everything is a repetitive motion right no matter 
how ergonomically correct you're trying to be, those are issues that's still probably going to take place. Um, so, um, I've already, you know, was experiencing a little carpet tunnel before I even start doing nails because of my manufacturing job. So, you know, I just have to be mindful. Um, so here I'm just going in and I'm just going at a, um, 45 degree angle here and I'm just cleaning up that shape but I'm going from side to side just like when I built the nail the or uh, you know structured the tip going from side to side I don't want to just stay on one side of the nail I want to give attention to both sides of the nail and now I'm going with the 180s grit side and I'm going in one direction as you guys can see I'm going from right to left because I'm right-handed now, if you was left-handed, you probably would want to go left to right because that's your dominant hand is your left hand. But I'm right-handed, so I'm going right to left, and I'm just staying in one motion. And I am going to file this nail till I see that kind of like white ashy look or a very um, dull look on the nail. Um, and if I see any shiny spots on the nail, I know that. I need to keep buffing until I get that shiny spot out the nail because if you see a shiny spot in the nail that means that it's not e the nail is not structurally even across the nail from the side wall the center and the other side wall of the nail so you need to make sure that you see uh, you don't see any um, like light spots or um, that shadowy spot. I don't know how to explain it, but you want to make sure the the nail is fully covered in that look right here, like that um, white, ashy, gritty look, if that makes sense. Um, that way you know that you have buffed the surface of the nail and the nail is even all the way around the nail. Okay, so you can look side to side. You can even look down the barrel of the nail and see your structure of your nail and know that, you know, everything is nice and even. When you're looking at the nail and you look down the barrel of the nail, you can see if you need to go in and add a little bit more product and, you know, uh, fill in that space or gap. You also can use that with... Um, Fill that in with base coat itself as well. You don't have to go in with builder gel and fill that in. You can fill that in with base coat. It's always a easy way to fill in any kind of small gaps that you may have in the uh, surface of the nail. But here I'm just going in and I'm just going to do this again. Repeat this step on the ring finger. Let you guys see it one more time. And then I'm going to do the rest off camera. All right, guys, I'll let you enjoy.
All right, now that I've finished fouling the nails and getting it all smooth and shape shaping again, nice and crisp, I'm going to go in with my buffer block and I'm going to buff the surface of the nail. Now, buffing is important if you're going to do nail art on the nail. If you're not going to do nail art on nails, um, you could just use um, some a lint-free wipe with acetone to melt the scratches but I'm gonna be doing some nail art on this hand so I am going to but that's gonna be in uh, part two of the video whenever I do the nail art portion for this hand but I'm gonna go ahead and buff the surface of the nail I'm not gonna put any top coat on it guys because I know I'm gonna use this this hand to do some um, nail art on so I just want to go ahead and have it already prepped and ready so I can roll into that video when I get ready to uh, upload or do that video um, so buffing is very important if you are doing Frenchies on a nail you need to buff the nail if you're doing line work on the nail you need to buff the nail if you're doing anything other than just being done at this point with the nails you need to buff the nails simply because buffing the nails is going to ensure that those scratches that was created when you was using that hand file or that e-file that you smooth out the surface of the nail and you want to take your hand down the your gloved hand or your hand finger down the nail to make sure you can feel uh where the buffing has smoothed or have a smooth feel on the surface of the nail. Um, when you don't buff the nail, you're going to run into issues when it comes to doing your Frenchies or creating line work. You're going to find yourself having a lot of skip lines in your poly gel, um, sorry, in your gel paint or with your brush. Um, or um, even if you're just doing a solid coat on the nail, like say you was going to style these you this is your base layer but you want to add red or black or white or something on the nail well you still need to buff out the nail because had if you don't buff out the nail you're going to see those lines and that um scratches coming through and you're going to be like why is it looking like this it's looking like that because the nail wasn't buffed so make sure guys buffing is a very important step to finishing out the look for your client's nail as well as yourself so don't skip the buffing and I know a lot of people use that uh, buffing bit with their e-file and hey long as you buff that's all I can say if you're using that buffing bit long as you buff all right guys if you have enjoyed today's video or have got anything from today's video leave me a comment in the comment section below let me know if this is the style of video you like the step-by-step -step application only tutorial type videos and i'll be sure to add a few more to the channel just uh let me know um the next medium you would like to see broke down or step-by-step -step. Um, I can um, create a video for you with that. Um, I know there are um, things I need to do for my members. I also want to make sure I'm doing uh, for my viewers and subscribers as well. I just want you guys to be able to learn and grow on your own journey and be able to, you know, be uh, dabble in a few other mediums besides just, you know, your comfortable medium, right? So... Um, I want to thank you all so much for the continued support to my channel. I truly, truly appreciate each and one of each and every one of you very, very much. If you are here and have not yet subscribed and this is the type of content you like, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's free to you. It does not cost a thing. And we would love to have you a part of the Nail Genie family. All right, guys. So this is the final look of this application process. I think the nails came out gorgeous. They're so beautiful. I love looking at them. Even when I go in the nail room and I haven't put any nail art on them yet, I still just love looking at them. I love the shape of these. Um, I am not a stiletto wearer um, because they're so sharp. But I do love to uh, be able to 
remember how to shape a nail. Um, even, you know, even if I buy the stilettos, how I can crisp that shape up, um, even more because, you know, y'all know as well as I do, when we buy these, uh, tips already made, they don't come out that crispy. You got to crispen those things up. So <laughs> I was glad that I was able to do that and actually just kind of turn that coffin into a stiletto and fine tune my shaping skills. All right, guys. So these are the products I use. If I am reminded, I will leave them down in the description box below for you guys. So you can head over to Madam Glam and pick you up some yourself. And yeah, we're going to talk about the answer to the question of the day and we are out of here. All right, guys, so the answer to the question of today, today is B, lift small bits of debris from the nail plate. So tweezers can be used for a lot of different things, using it for nail art or uh, lifting um, small debris from your nail plate. So, um, yeah, tweezers are an important thing to have in your collection. So, guys, make sure you uh, know what it's used for. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me over on all of my socials at the Nail Genie SC. And I will see you all in my next video. You already know what time it is. The deuces are flying in the air. Poof, the Nail Genie. She's out. <laughs>